Hello, my friends, and welcome back to yet another episode of Watching the Watchers Live. My name is Robert Govea. I am a criminal defense attorney here at the r, &R Law Group in the always beautiful and sunny Scottsdale, Arizona. And today we're talking about the media. A lot of interesting skirmishes taking place in different sectors of our world. We've got The View that we're going to take a look at. Whoopi Goldberg, of course, got herself into a little bit of trouble claiming that she was the authority on the, the uh, Holocaust, you know, uh, the, the genocide. Genocidal uh, catastrophe that happened to man once <laughs> in recent history. Well, this is a uh, kind of a big thing, but she sort of doubled down on it last night on Colbert after she made a, a kind of a weird take on this on The View yesterday. And then she came out today and apologized for it. And so we're going to break this down because a lot of people are saying, hey, we've got a double standard here. There's been a lot of other incidents where certain people have said certain things and there's been a gigantic symphony chorus of people screaming that that person needs to be terminated and fired and thrown right out on their bums. And so they're wondering, why is this not being applied to Miss Whoopi Goldberg? And so we've got a lot to break down in there. I have a uh, you know, very interesting blog article that's uh, pretty pretty uh, humorous that we'll get to as well. And we'll stop there and then transition because Joe Rogan in another part of the media ecosphere has also been in the thick of it. And so we haven't really talked about this at all on this channel, but I've been following it closely because Joe Rogan has sort of been the lightning rod out there for many people uh, sort of like myself, we keep our eyes on that lightning rod because he's, you know, a lot of people are uh, upset with him about some of the things that he is talking about, some of the issues pertaining to the pandemic and people's medical freedom and autonomy. I'm interested in a lot of those conversations. And so uh, Joe Rogan is like the canary in the coal mine, right? If they can come after somebody as big as him and throw him off of a platform when he's got a hundred million dollars invested in him, well, that doesn't bode well for the rest of us, just little peons out here trying to, you know, carve out our little, uh, you know, a place in the conversation. So we're keeping a close eye on that. And um, it's kind of interesting how this is unfolding. It sort of feels like Rogan and Spotify are coming to this. I think it's just um, kind of a token gesture. We're going to analyze it in a little bit more detail. We've got Joe Rogan's Instagram video post that he placed out there on uh, Instagram. And so we'll break that down. I clipped about three minutes of it because he's going to detail sort of how he sees misinformation. And this is a big, you know, big problem that, uh, you know, we've, I've had videos here struck down saying that we are spreading disinformation. We, they threw our entire community off of discord because we were dangerous misinformationists. And, and, and my, uh, th this channel was demonetized for nine months last year, the entire channel the whole thing because of misinformation. And so it's very interesting to watch how this is continuing to develop. Joe Rogan is uh, is a part of this conversation, of course. And then for the final segment on the show today, we've got Jen Psaki. Jen Psaki over the weekend, she was out there, she was on somebody's show and she was sort of kind of like scoffing at Fox News and saying, that what they were talking about was different than what the other people on the media were talking about. Pointing, saying, oh, you know, it's CNN's back there and they're talking about this. And MSNBC's talking about basically the same thing because it's a copy and paste journalism. And also this one's talking and so on and so forth. And then upset that Fox News was like not like the others. And then uh, kind of got in a little bit of trouble over this because it felt like she was scoffing at Americans who were concerned about their cities being burnt down because of uh, criminality. And so she answered a question about this yesterday during the press briefing that we'll check in on because she's saying that the Democratic Party has always been in favor of tough crime laws. And so I actually agree with her on that because I have said for a long time on this channel that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are basically the godfather and godmother of our current criminal justice system. They're responsible for more people incarcerated than uh, than anybody I can think of in, in modern history. So we've got a lot to get to, as you can tell. And if you want to be a part of the show, the place to do that is over at watching the watchers dot locals dot com there's chatting away over there i'm not gas is there ion energy dave two's in the house we've got three girlies jeremy matrita i'm not gas jeremy has a good excuse says rob blame you're being late on the youtube stream delay you think the chat will buy that jeremy i'm not sure about that we're also streaming on rumble shout out to sedona rocks man versus yard vienticus prime is over there 
and we've got uh, a lot of other places you can participate. I mentioned this yesterday. I turned on this feature on our YouTube channel, so you can now click this join button right next to that red subscribe button, and a couple new features come out. You get a badge. I think this shows up in the comments section, so these badges will show up in the comments. Just show you're a supporter, and of course, I appreciate that, and your badges sort of, uh, you sort of tear up which is pretty cool. And yesterday I mentioned that we had four gifts that were now available. And since we had members who joined up, I added, I got to add three more GIFs, gifts. And so yesterday we had uh, Biden fallen over and the Rittenhouse WTF, and we had the Trump wrong. And we had the cocaine Mitch gets the cocaine hit. But today we added the Alex Jones uh, shock face. We've got the rock who's doing the, the eye roll. And then this is Elon down here dancing. I'm not sure that one kind of didn't turn out that great, but those are now added to the, uh, to the community member. And so if you, if you go over there and you click that join button, like blue bunny did shout out like Saka Kyo did shout out to them. They joined up at that shout out level. And so we're giving them some shout outs. And so thank you everybody for supporting the show. I really do appreciate it. And I'm having fun with these uh, new features making it a little bit more interactive. So I appreciate the support. All right, and so without any further ado, let's get into it. Whoopi Goldberg. Now she's been around a long time. You may remember her from some Disney movies. I certainly do. Kind of been around my entire life and always had some interesting perspectives, very interesting takes. And um, this is a new one though. This is one where she's saying that the Holocaust, you know, that, that sort of uh, cataclysmic, catastrophic, almost world ending, problem that the entire globe had there for a while uh she sort of is kind of missing the whole crux of uh, why that was happening so you know the master race you know a, a, a white supremacy a ultimate superiority a lot of things like that were kind of fundamental to the analysis of that entire equation at least when i was uh, learning these things but uh uh that didn't resonate with Whoopi because we have different interpretations of race and she i think I'm not sure if she knows that there are others. Anyways, here's what she said on The View. Well, also, if you're yeah. going to do this, then let's be truthful about it, because the Holocaust isn't about race. No. What? No, it's well, not about it race. Is, it is. It is. Well, no, it's Jews about a different it, race. But it's it's not about race. Dead silence. It's not about well, race. What is it about? Because you, what is it's it? about man's inhumanity to man. What kind of garbage is That's that? That's okay. what it's about. But it's about white supremacy. It's well, about but it's not, it's Jews, not about you know, ideal and, race. And it's and but these are two Romans. white groups of people. Well, they're, they're, they're both white. But you see them as white people. And they, but you're missing the point. You're yeah. missing the point. Yeah. The minute you turn it into race, <laughs> it goes down this alley. Let's talk about it for what it is. It's how people treat each other. That's it's hilarious. It doesn't matter if you're Bunch black of white people. or white, because black, white, Jews, uh, it's ha everybody eats each other. So is it, if Just you're uncomfortable, <laughs> if you hear about mouse, should you be worried? Should, should your child say, oh my God, I, I, I wonder if that's me? No, you that's hear that not music? what they're gonna say. They're gonna say, I don't wanna be Are they cutting that. her out? Well, hopefully. I well, wanna be cool. Yeah, yeah. And in well, yeah. most kids, I, I, most oh. kids- Are they, they playing they her out right now? Cool. No, they don't. And, and so this is the know, first time I've actually listened to this. People are, are comparing <laughs> vaccine cards to the yellow stars, where people are comparing mm -hmm. vaccinations to what Anne Frank yeah. went through. Yeah. So it is necessary for kids to learn about the Holocaust. Okay. To learn about man's inhumanity to man, however it exposes itself. I have to cut you off. I just want to say that Mouse was banned and it flew to the top 20 of Amazon's rules last week. Wow. Yes. So I'm pretty sure they're playing her out. Okay, so I was only listening to the actual clip of that, right? Like the first part of the clip. And I didn't listen to the full clip. I went and clipped the bigger clip so that we could listen to it in context today. And she's saying that, you know, it's it's, uh, it's about man's inhumanity to man and all of the, I guess, the racial Nazi white uh, language that we heard throughout the entire Holocaust was sort of irrelevant. So that obviously caught a lot of people by surprise because uh, if you study the history, you know, you know, you can sort of. For, for somebody who I think sees sort of everything as a racial sort of oppression, right, the idea that there could be other races out there is probably pretty sh shocking to go whoopee. It, you know, it's, 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 it's not just a giant bucket of white people. 
there's there's uh, you know okay but it's hard it's complicated anyway so we go back in time in history and we can rewind the clock to 1935. Uh, September 15th, Nuremberg race laws were imposed in 1935. German Jews are stripped of their citizenship, reducing them to mere subjects of the state, 1935. After Hitler's ascension to the office as president and chancellor of Germany, he set about the task of remaking his adopted country into the dream state. But his dream was soon to become a nightmare for many early on. The lives of non-Jewish German citizens were barely disrupted, but not so for Hitler's, quote, enemies, Hitler's racist ideology, which elevated those of pure-blooded German stock, took to the levels of, quote, masters of the earth that began working itself out in vicious ways. And so back in 1935, this is the German, you know, Nazi Congress, their parliament, signing this thing into law, right? And so it's important that I think we remember these things. Here's what happened. And I'm pretty sure that's Hitler right there. Now, I don't speak German. Okay, and I'm pretty sure he said Jew there too. I'm pretty sure. All right. And so, like, this was a thing in history that actually happened. And so, uh, history.com tells us more. It says, within the first year of Hitler's rule, German Jews were excluded from a host of other high-profile vocations, from public office to journalism, radio, theater, everywhere. Jews not welcome signs could be seen on the shop and hotel windows, beer gardens, and other public arenas. You know, you know there's sort of... Yeah, I remember signs being a part of American history, you know, sort of during the Civil War era and then back during the desegregation era, you know, sort of similar type of racist signs. Yeah, let's see here. Nuremberg laws, uh, these discriminatory acts became embedded in culture by fiat, making them far, far more reaching. Jews were forbidden to marry Aryans or engage in extramarital relations with them. Jews could not employ female Aryan servants if they were less than 35 years of age. Jews found it difficult to buy food. Dairies would not admit Jewish customers, even pharmacies wouldn't sell them medicine or drugs. And then we saw, you know, you know, all sorts of stuff like this, anti-Jewish propaganda from the Nazis. They even established the Reich Ministry of Public Enlightenment to ensure that the message was communicated everywhere. Jew it created uh, you know, messages. You can see here 1935 before the Nuremberg race logs came out. All sorts of issues. And the Germans were seen as, you know, eliminating the Jews and saving their country. You can see this, right? More films. This film, Nazi films portrayed Jews as subhuman creatures infiltrating Aryan society. Jews seen as wandering cultural parasites consumed with sex and money, they say, right? All over the place. And they promoted national pride of the Nazi regime at the Olympics, right? And so it just, it, it just sort of feels, you know, sort of feels like we just kind of well, let, let's listen to Whoopi. Here she's going to explain herself because it's a complicated issue. I can understand people having, you know, a difficult time talking about these issues. It, it is hard to talk about. You know, every time I, I'm talking about these issues, it's like I'm tiptoe, tiptoe and tap dancing on a minefield. My goodness. And so let's turn it over to Whoopi and see what she has to say about this because she's going to detail what she said in the first part that uh, the Holocaust wasn't about race. Here's, here's her explanation. They're all the same. <laughs> it's just a bunch. Look. If you're not black, then I, I, I don't even know what, I don't even know what to say about, but I, I think the, is she saying the only race is black? Is that what she's saying here? I don't know what she's saying here because I think that's what she's saying. And she's also saying that she's not going to apologize essentially, right? That entire clip. Did you hear her say, I'm sorry? He, and even Colbert's like, Whoopi, for the love of Lord and Pete and all, heaven almighty, can you just say that at least the Nazis thought it was about race? And she says, no, they didn't. They were liars. It was all white people over there. <laughs> and you can't, as we know, folks, you can't be racist against white people if they all look the same. <laughs> oh, I don't even know what to say about this. I'm actually sort of dumbfounded about what to say because it's, uh, offensive, <laughs> but you know, you, she can get away with it. I get, or maybe she won't. We'll see. Let's see here what Whoopi Goldberg said. So I want to make a quick note of this. So let's, let's rewind the timeline on this thing a little bit. 
let's explain the timeline on this thing. So, of course, Whoopi makes the statement on The View. Everybody freaks out about it. The clip I just played from you was her on Colbert. Colbert is a night show. The night show, however, does not record at 1130. The, re the record, the, 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 uh, at 1130, they record that at about 430, right, during the afternoon. So Whoopi goes and does the recording on Colbert where she doubles down, right? She's like, all right, I, I dub double down on this thing. Uh, it's all a bunch of white people. I can't tell you guys apart. And so just, you know, figure it out on your own. The only race that matters, just kind of like the only rape that matters is, you know, not actual rape, rape, whatever she said previously. It's only sort of the racial categories that I think she def decides are pertinent. So she gets to sort of uh, establish the gate about what is a race and what is not a race. And she gets to, uh, you know, have conversations about that. I guess. Okay. So anyways, Back to the timeline, says it on The View, doubles down on Colbert, probably about 4.30, 5.30 when they're taping that show. And then a couple hours go by, guess what happens? She hops on Twitter. This is what she posted on Twitter. She says this at 8.15. So this is now after the, the appearance on the Colbert, right? So she, she, the show has not aired yet, but she did record it. And so now she's sort of, apologizing. Yeah, she is officially. She says, on today's show, I said the Holocaust is not about race, but about man's inhumanity to man. I should have said it was about both. As Jonathan Greenblatt from the Anti-Defamation League shared, the Holocaust was about Nazis' systematic annihilation of the Jewish people, who they deem to be an inferior race. I stand corrected. Jewish people around the world have always had my support, and that will never waver. I'm sorry for the hurt I have caused. So I get an apology there. But that was not what she said four hours earlier on the Colbert show, okay, when she was recording this, says, written with my sincerest apologies, signed Whoopi Goldberg. And so, man, something must have happened there, right? Right after that taping. And uh, very curious. And so then Whoopi comes out on The View today, and this is how she cleans this up. And it's, as we're going to see, there's probably a pretty... The, the, the reason, let, let's just pause on this for one quick second again. All right. Colbert, 430. She records it. She stands strong. 815 comes out. We get two apologies. I'm sorry for the hurt with my sincerest apologies. Okay. So something happened sort of in that four hour window, right? Uh, we got Whoopi Goldberg doubling down on this twice in the same day. And then a couple hours, something changes. Let's see what happens. Today, she shows up on The View. Here's how she addresses her audience. Yesterday uh, on our show, I misspoke. And I tweeted Twice. about Twice. it last night. But I, I kind of want you to hear it from me directly. I said something that I feel a responsibility for not leaving unexamined because my words upset so many people, which was never my intention. And I understand why now. And for that, I am deeply, deeply grateful because the information I got was really helpful and helped me understand some awesome. different things. And while Good. discussing how a Tennessee school board unanimously, unanimously voted to remove a graphic novel about the Holocaust, I said that the Holocaust wasn't about race, and it was instead about man's inhumanity to man. But it is indeed about race. All right, so we're because we're, Hitler and the Nazis considered Jews to be an inferior race. Their words the bell. matter, and mine are no exception. I regret my comments, as I said, and I stand corrected. I also stand with <clears> the Jewish people, as they know and y'all know, because I've always done that. So because of all of this, we've asked Jonathan Greenblatt, the CEO of the Anti-Defamation League and author of It Could Happen Here, to help continue this very important conversation. Yeah, It Could Happen Here, which is a pretty good, uh, uh, yes, pretty good, yes, pretty, pretty good thought there. Now, as you saw, right, she's kind of just reading from a statement and does a nice job of it. But man, that was an about face pretty quick, wasn't it? Between like that four hours, because we just heard her double down on that thing. And she must have misspoke twice because she had several hours after the view tape yesterday before she went over to Colbert to re sort of think those comments and to have somebody sort of smack her in the head and say, uh, have you seen Mein Kampf before? Let me show you this document. And uh, she, she was sort of able to, to, to pivot. She certainly didn't until 
four hours go by and somebody gives her a phone call. We're going to dive into that in a minute because there are murmurings now that ABC is unhappy about her. And there's precedent for this, right? What happened with Roseanne Barr? What happened with some of these other people? We're going to see that there is a standard that has been set and people are going to be asking why Miss Goldberg is not being held to that same standard. So after Miss Goldberg gave us her explanation in that, uh, she sort of looks like a like a triangle there. Says uh, they bring on the first guest. Says uh, the Anti Defamation League, right? The ADL, and so Jonathan Greenblatt comes out and he explains to Whoopi how the Nazis view the Jews as a subhuman race. Here's what he says, and so Whoopi is going to sit here and just take this education on national TV, right? And 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 this is a woman I can basically guarantee you doesn't believe you know any of this because she doubled down on it. Well, I can't. I don't want to put words into her head, but. She, she was pretty stern about this on the Colbert show. There's, there's no question about it. Um, and so she's going to just sit here and, and get educated, which look, I appreciate her, you know, being willing to go and actually learn something. You know, I, I think that everybody should be humble and, you know, ha have enough humility, myself included, to learn new things. And I'm going to make mistakes and say stupid stuff. And so I think that she should be shown that same grace. Uh, but she, <laughs> she did double down on it. And now let's listen in. A lot of people were very upset by what I said yesterday and <coughs> the things they I regret. And so I want to clear this up. I Can regret. You explain why the Holocaust was about race. Well, Whoopi, there's no question that, guy, that that's a white the guy. Holocaust was about race. That guy that's white? how the Nazis saw it as they perpetrated <laughs> the systematic annihilation of the Jewish people yeah, across but... continents, across countries, with deliberate and ruthless cruelty. And literally, the first page of Mouse, yeah, the book but... you were talking about yesterday, Whoopi, it opens with a quote from Hitler, and literally it says, the Jews undoubtedly are a race, but they are not human. You see, Hitler's ideology, the Third <laughs> Reich, was predicated on the idea that the Aryans, the Germans, were a, quote, master race, and the Jews were a subhuman race. It was a racialized anti-Semitism. Okay. Now that all right, well, I, yeah, that's all well and good, but I, that, that looks like a white guy to me, so I don't know that he is even qualified to talk about racism. According to Whoopi Goldberg standards, so she's just sitting there cross-eyed like, when is this white guy this <laughs> going to get off the screen? Oh, what's happening? All right. And so uh, some people, uh, you know, I was thinking a lot about this. <clears throat> Do you remember Rush Limbaugh? How he had his, um, his co-host, right? I mean, really his call screener, Bo Snerdly. Bo Snerdly you know, if you don't remember this, was actually certified black enough to comment on a lot of issues involving race. And so it'd be nice, you know, to hear what he has to say about this, because obviously I'm not remotely certified to comment on these things. But I think that uh, I think Diamond and Silk, they might be in that category. They're here. They say Diamond and Silk says, you all remember when ABC fired Roseanne Barr because of a tweet. Remember that? So what is ABC going to do about Whoopi Goldberg and uh, her rhetoric? Anything? Are they going to do anything about it? Well, I'm not sure. You know, who knows? And most people, their, their first instinct is, no, they're not going to do anything about it. What are they going to do? Right? She's on their team. She's on the same side. She's on ABC and all of those things. But she might have really stepped in it this time. Page six, which sort of keeps the tabs and the news on a lot of this stuff says that Whoopi Goldberg is in deep doo-doo, according to ABC Insiders. The actual word starts with an S. You can see it here. They're reporting exclusive details saying that others are saying she should be fired. Posted on February 1st, uh, 123. This is written by Emily Smith saying there is growing fury inside ABC over Whoopi Goldberg's controversial Holocaust claims. Insiders insisting that her apology isn't enough in demanding that she be fired. On the Monday edition, she said it's not about race because it's all white people over there. Says she doubled down on that claim on The Late Show after stating on Twitter, I stand corrected. However, sources tell Page Six that staffers and fellow hosts on The View, as well as insiders, are furious that Goldberg has not been disciplined. Sources say that uh, staffers, ABC staffers and Disney Network execs are saying Whoopi went way too far and board members 
are not happy with her apology. They want a fuller retraction. Word is that Whoopi is in deep S, according to one ABC insider. Yikes. Another quote here says, why does Whoopi seemingly get a pass when others don't? Perhaps this time she won't. Many at the network, including her fellow hosts, believe Whoopi is too controversial now for the show. Insider said the situation, quote, isn't just going to blow over. It's going to cast a shadow over everything for a while. Even Joy Behar was heard saying backstage that Whoopi is, quote, dead wrong and may not ever recover from this. <laughs> I'm never going to recover from this. Remember that uh, Tiger King financial? Remember that him when that tiger bit that lady's arm off? And Joe uh, Danger, whatever his name is, says, uh, I'm never going to financially recover from this. It's probably how Whoopi's feeling right now. Joy found this particularly troubling and couldn't believe Whoopi wouldn't stand corrected until she was forced to be. <laughs> uh, according to the insider, ABC, they are incredulous, asking questions. How stoned can she be? How much pot is she smoking? Her agents are panicking. She may have ruined herself from good. Plus, she now has to worry about potential death threats. Now, listen, I don't endorse any of that, right? I don't, look, I don't think that people should be uh, overly punished with death for their opinions, all right? I think that people should be free to make asses of themselves if they want to. And if Whoopi, you know, is uh, not doing her job... People demand that she is fired and she should be fired, but I'm not calling for, for that. Other people, though, are seeing this double standard. Among those who fumed over Goldberg, previously in hot water, this guy, Piers Morgan, he posted, he said, Sharon Osbourne was fired from the talk for defending me against a fake charge of racism. Whoopi Goldberg said that the Holocaust wasn't about race, which was about the most racist comment as any person could make. But she doesn't lose her job. Other people from TV say Whoopi may benefit from the fact that people are tired of cancel culture, but it's still astonishing that it's one rule for Whoopi and another for everyone else. Yeah. ABC, Disney, not making any statements. Now, we're going to compare and contrast some of this, you know, with, with other people, right? I'm, I'm not in favor of cancel culture. I don't think that anybody should be, you know, sort of uh, just canceled for their opinions. I think that people's, now, there, there, there are consequences for your opinions, of course, right? If you say something that your entire audience hates and that makes you appear like a reprehensible person that uh, sort of uh, makes the show distasteful to viewers, well, there are consequences for that. People don't watch your show. You lose advertisers. They say, we don't want your ugly opinions on TV anymore and you're gone, right? There are consequences for that. But I don't like the idea that people are just being canceled for their opinions. You can just sort of change the channel and turn people off. And if you don't like it, well, that's okay. And uh, just, you know, but, but we can all continue to march on. ABC and Disney, no statement. Now we're going to come back to that because we're going to talk about Joe Rogan on the other side of this coin. We've got Whoopi Goldberg on the one side of the media kerfuffle. On the other side, Joe Rogan. We're going to get to him shortly. Many people calling for him to be canceled. Not because he's saying racist things like the Holocaust didn't function around the basis of race, but because he's having conversations. And so we're just going to keep both of these things in context. But before we do, you know, there was a glaring question that comes out when you're talking about Whoopi Goldberg and... Uh, the Holocaust and Jews and the Jewish religion and all of this. Many people in the chat have even been noticing this. They're saying, Whoopi Goldberg, isn't she Jewish? She doesn't know anything about this Goldberg. And, and you know, I noticed that too. This is very curious. And somebody who writes a blog called lidblog.com by the name of Jeff Dunitz, he noticed that too. Here's what he wrote. He says, hey, Whoopi. Whoopi Goldberg is a stage name. Goldberg. Her birth name is Karen Elaine Johnson, says Jeff. In other words, despite using the stage name Goldberg, she isn't, nor has she ever been Jewish. Using that stage name, some people blame her stupidity on the Jews. People are asking the same question. How can she be so dumb? She's appropriating Jewish names and Jewish culture. And she's not even Jewish? All right. And so Jeff writes, and because of her stage name, every time she does something idiotic, the Jews get blamed. And Jeff is getting tired of it. 
in the interest of tolerance, writes Jeff, and preventing anti-Semitism, I believe that Ms. Goldberg should remove the cultural appropriation and change her stage name. And I think this is something that you can uh, easily get behind. Change her stage name. And he's got some proposals for us. Let's see what those are. And he gives us some, uh, some explanation here. He writes, the Jews are supposed to be, quote, the chosen people, but it's time for Whoopi to choose someone else for a change. The Jews already have their fair share of famous embarrassments. Remember Woody Allen and some other things. For heaven's sake, he says, please get rid of the Goldberg. He says, come on, Whoopi, let's try these names on instead. Rather than calling yourself Whoopi Goldberg, how about you call yourself Whoopi Rachmaninoff? How about Whoopi Chin? How about Whoopi Singh? How about Whoopi McStuppy? How about Whoopi Obama or Joe Biden? Hey, I got an idea. How about you change your name to Whoopi Ayatollah Khamenei, but lose the Goldberg? Haven't the Jews suffered enough, right? And so, of course, this story, you know, is going to, who knows if it's going to continue on, if she's going to change her opinion. But the point of all of this is that we're seeing the media now act as gatekeepers and authority figures about what can be said and, and who can be on what platforms. And we're seeing the alternative side of this as well. Now we talk about Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan has also been the focus of a lot of media pressure, people saying that he should change what he says and how he modifies his conversations and what he talks about on his podcast, people calling for him to be canceled. And you've probably seen these stories all over the place saying, oh my gosh, Neil Young, who uh, you know is a famous old musician, is now actually pulling his music off of Spotify, and then Spotify stock is crashing along with the other tech companies. And so we're seeing now how you know th- these levers are being pushed all over the place to try to craft the narratives that we all have to listen to. It doesn't matter which way you go, right? There are pressures abounding. Joe Rogan now is addressing this situation. If you missed it, Neil Young came out, said, uh, we're, we, I'm going to take my music off your platform unless you cancel Joe Rogan. And Joe Rogan is not canceled, obviously. He's a $100 million investment from Spotify, and he's sticking around. Spotify now is going to roll out a series of new rules, which we're going to break down in a minute. But before we do, let's get up to speed about what Joe Bide, I'm sorry, what Joe Rogan is doing to address all of this. And so he actually posted a nine-minute video over on Instagram, and he's saying, my thoughts on the latest controversy with Spotify. And we're going to listen to a little bit of this, but remember what this is all about. He had two podcasts. Actually, he's going to explain it. Let's listen in. Here's what Joe says. Hello, friends. Hello, Joe. I wanted to make a video to address some of the controversy that's been going on over the past few days. And first of all, to say thank you to everyone that sent love and support. I truly, truly appreciate it. Love you, buddy. And it's been very nice to hear from you. I wanted to make this video, first of all, because I think there's a lot of people that have a distorted perception of what I do, maybe based on sound bites or based on headlines of articles that are disparaging. Um, The podcast has been accused of spreading dangerous misinformation, specifically about two episodes, a little bit about some other ones, but specifically about two, one with uh, Dr. Peter McCullough and one with Dr. Robert Malone. Good episodes, Dr. Peter McCullough is a cardiologist and he is the most published physician in his field in history. Dr. Robert Malone owns nine patents on the creation of mRNA vaccine technology and is at least partially responsible for the creation of the technology that led to mRNA vaccines. Okay, so uh, we're going to take a quick look at those. Now, Joe Rogan, of course, just kind of uh, giving us a summation of what's happening. And these are two very good episodes. I listened to both of them. This one is 1757 on Spotify. This is the one that really sent people through the roof. This guy, Dr. Robert Malone, is he's a big anti-vaxxer, really. I mean, he's sort of... uh, Uh, I I would say that's how they would label him, right? That's how the opposite side would label him. Somebody in a pejorative sense, uh, in a sense, who is sort of challenging the standard narrative that's coming out from the official sources. And that's why they're so angry with this guy. And so here you can see, right, he's he's highly credentialed uh, just based on this this uh, summation here off Joe Rogan show inventor of nine original mRNA vaccine patents filed 1989 
uh, close to 100 peer-reviewed publications, cited 12,000 times, right? Aren't these things like more or less objectively verifiable, right? He's the president of the Global COVID Summit, United, all of these things. Okay, now, nobody invited Robert Malone onto this show to say, Robert Malone, we need you, sir, to establish COVID policy and protocol for the entire United States. Uh, sir, we'd like you to just uh, uh, tell your, your policy pro proposal to Joe Rogan, and we're just going to go and just do it. Okay, that's not what this is for. Okay, so Robert Malone, in my opinion, could be anybody he wants to be, right? Come out there and talk about whatever the heck he wants to. It's Joe's show. It's a podcast. Yes, he's got a responsibility to his audience and to be a responsible individual, but that's on him. Right. And if he wants to communicate with somebody and have a conversation about this, that's his prerogative. It's his show. Now, he made agreements with Spotify. And so he's got to play nice because now he's playing in their playground. And everybody's got to play nice because everybody's playing in everybody's playground, whether on YouTube or anywhere else. Everybody's trying to find that magical unicorn, that bastion of free speech. We're all still scrambling to find it wherever it is. We're looking. And so everybody's got to sort of play within the rules. That's okay. We all do that. We all play within the rules when we go to the workplace, when we go to court, when we go spend time with our girlfriend's parents, right? Don't act like a lunatic when that happens, right? We all sort of modify our behavior. Now, what we're talking about is the ability for people to explore new ideas and, and, and experiment with concepts. And this is a podcast. And where else are you going to get hour-long conversations about deep issues like this? The other issue that they're screaming about is this one. December 2021, Peter McCullough, board-certified cardiologist. You heard Joe Rogan explain more about him. So both of these came out. He is uh, tested, he's been called in front of Congress, right? Committees in front of the U.S. and Texas Senate. And so somebody who's credentialed. And just because Joe Rogan has a gigantic popular show, uh, doesn't mean that he has to only have people on who are official directors of the government, right, from the CDC or something like that. Just because Joe Rogan's reach is like uh, 10 to 15 times that of anybody on CNN, if not more than that, right, it might be 20, 25, I don't know, massive. Uh, just because he has a bigger reach doesn't mean he has to follow your official line. The fact that we're even having this conversation is sort of offensive to me. The fact that he has to sort of, you know, apologize for this and that we're even having to debate free speech in America like this is really just it's actually shocking to me. You know, the First Amendment is the First Amendment for a reason. And the idea that we have free speech, but except it's, it's very limited around the margins. In other words, our free speech is only it only goes to the limit that the tech companies allow us to have, that Spotify allows us to have, that anybody that exercises the lever of powers allows us to have is insane. Here's Joe Rogan talking about the problem with misinformation and why there is a problem with misinformation. Oftentimes it's the categorization or even the use of the category of misinformation in the first place, because what often starts out as misinformation turns out to be accurate information. Here's what Joe says. Uh, they, those episodes were labeled as being dangerous. Why? They had dangerous misinformation in them. Yeah. The problem I have with the term misinformation, especially today, is that many of the things that we thought of as misinformation just a short while ago are now accepted as fact. They are. And we've talked about many of these. I mean, there there have been stories that so, you know, we've we've look, we've pushed. We've, I've tried to be sort of, uh, you know, forward thinking, covering a lot of the stuff that as soon as the CDC allows us to talk about it. Boom, we'll talk about it. But it's it's been sort of this cat and mouse game. I had a video talking about that I word that YouTube flag, talking about Joe Rogan in particular, struck down by YouTube. And it turned into this, you know, this they, they reinstated it because it was sort of misidentified. But we're all dancing around and tiptoeing around the issues. What Joe is talking about is that those conversations that many people were having a long time ago turned out to be right. And he gives us one example of this, uh, the lab escape theory, probably the most pertinent of all of them. Here is Joe. If you said, I think it's possible that COVID-19 came from a lab, you'd be banned from yes. many social media platforms. Now that's Instantly. on the cover of Newsweek. All of those theories that at one point in time were banned were openly discussed by those two men that I had on my podcast that have been accused of dangerous misinformation. I do not know if they're right. I don't know because I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. 
I'm just a person who sits down and talks to people and has conversations with them. That's it, right? <laughs> and like, that's his responsibility, okay? You know, like there's no, he, he's got an obligation to continue to, I would say, be responsible, right? You don't want him, you don't want anybody out there being irresponsible, but if he's being irresponsible, like what is your definition of irresponsible? If you, if you can't define that, if you, if you allow all, you know, everybody to sort of set their own standards and you really can't have meaningful conversations because everything that is controversial is going to be irresponsible to somebody. And we're seeing how that slope looks. And it's just, it's, it's shocking as can be that so many people are okay with it. People sort of calling for Joe Rogan to just shut his mouth, even though a lot of the, the conversations he was having all have all been proven right. All right. So they are going to make make some changes over there. Spotify is going to um, add some warning labels. We're going to break this down in a minute. Take a look at Spotify's updated policy, if you want to call it that. And uh, here is uh, here's Joe now telling us that he's he's OK with the changes. He's fine with it. Here's what he says. Things that Spotify wants to do that I agree with is that at the beginning of these controversial podcasts, like specifically ones about covid is to put a disclaimer and say that you should speak with your physician and that these people and the opinions that they express are contrary to the opinions of uh, the consensus of experts, which I think is very important. Sure, have that on there. I'm very happy with that. Um, yeah, it's like, okay, fine. Like, you know, it's just, it's just ridiculous, folks. I mean, you've been here on this channel for long enough now. You know we talked about, I mean, there was more misinformation coming out of the Supreme Court oral arguments than out of Joe Rogan's podcast. So why don't we give them, you know, these warning labels on the Supreme Court judges? I mean, Sotomayor said that there were 100,000 kids in hospitals on ventilators or something similar to that. That's misinformation, man. So we should just put misinformation labels on everybody's stinking foreheads because everybody is so dumb that they can't think for themselves. And so we've got to label everything and we've got to make sure every single person in our society is coddled because they don't know. You know, people injecting themselves with bleach or whatever it is like they, they like people have to take some personal responsibility for their for their thinking. We can't protect every single person from every piece of information in this planet, in this world. And if we start trying, we're going to really limit the conversations that are meaningful and important. But okay, slap a stupid label on there. So here's what Spotify posted. January 30th, they don't address this by name. This is written by this guy, Daniel Elk. And uh, here's a picture of him. He's a billionaire, I think, over from the Netherlands. Co-founder of Spotify says, a decade ago, we created Spotify to help. Our core view, we believe listening is everything. There are plenty of views on Spotify that I disagree with strongly. Yeah, good. Change the channel. Good. We think we have a critical role to play in creator expression. Don't want to have anybody violating certain problems. Had a lot of questions over the last few days about our platform policies. We've had rules in place for many years, admittedly, but we haven't been transparent about them. Okay, so this is a funny thing now. You know, I, I honestly, after I read this, I think this is all like an empty gesture. And here, let me just point out what I mean. So here he comes out and he says, oh, we've had these policies for a long time. You know, we've had these rules in place for a long time about what goes on behind the scenes. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. I don't know. You know, it doesn't really matter. But it's sort of like, oh, we're just going to we're just going to open the door. We're just going to show you what we've got. This led to questions around our policies. Based on the feedback, it's come clear to me now. We're going to show you what's going on. We're going to open the doors and unveil what's behind the curtains. And so now you're going to see, and we're going to take a look at this. Like, are they being serious here? Is Spotify being serious or is just this kind of a token gesture? Today, we're publishing our long-standing platform rules. So the rules that were behind the scenes, they're going to publish them and you can find them on our newsroom. And we're going to look at them, right? Because I'm a lawyer and I like to look at the rules and see if they mean anything. Here it says, we're working to add a content advisory to any podcast episode that talks about COVID. So you're going to get the little blurb, just like you get on Facebook or Instagram or wherever. And we're going to be te begin testing ways that highlight our platform rules in creator tools. So they're basically going to build a back end for the creators to use. And so if you click over to the rules now, right, that's my question. All right. So what are they going to do now to censor content on Spotify or what's going to happen to Joe or anybody else who's on there? 
Spotify platforms. Now, what are the rules? And you're going to see, you know, I spend a lot of time studying the YouTube uh, community guidelines and the platform rules here. And, you know, it's, it's the same basic broad categories, deceptive content, you know, spam stuff, sensitive content, illegal stuff, obviously has got to go dangerous content. And so you start to say, oh, well, what's dangerous mean, right? I've been labeled dangerous many times here by YouTube. Would I survive on Spotify? I don't know. Here's what it says. It talks about physical harm. Joe Rogan doesn't do that. Content that talks about harassment or abuse of an identifiable group, no. Uh, how about hatred, violence, expression towards any you know, one of these groups, like gender identity or ethnicity or any of those things? Anybody there? No, not really those. So anything else? How about deceptive content, you know, is what Joe is talking about in terms of his interviews with Malone or McCullough. Is it deceptive content? Content that impersonates others. No, not doing that. Content that promotes manipulated or synthetic media. No, not doing that. How about con uh, content that interferes with elections? No. How about content that takes advantage of the Spotify community? No. Right. And so I went through the rest of it. Most of it's just, it's like not even detailed. Okay. If you go through, in other words, if you go through the YouTube community guidelines, it's like massive, right? Tons of examples. It's a really mature platform. They say you can't even think about the word ivermectin on this platform. If you do, we're going to come to your house and you're going to jail. And so you got to be very careful about that word. Otherwise, you'll be thrown off. Now, this is like nothing, right, relative to this. And really, there's not even hardly any consequences. So I took a look here. What happens to the rule breakers, the people who violate this policy? Uh, it says, we take these decisions seriously. Breaking the rules may result in content being removed from Spotify. And if you do it a lot, we might suspend you or terminate you. So there's nothing there. What else do I need to know? Nothing. How can I report an issue? Don't, basically. I want to let you know that we care about the pandemic. We've cared about it a long time. And we're going to continue to debate these things. And we're going to learn, grow, and evolve. Signed by Daniel. So uh, not really anything meaningful there, right? It's sort of just like... Neil who? Neil Young who? Okay, bye, Neil. All right, we're going to add a little label on there, just like all the other loser tech companies, because apparently that means something. I, I, I'd love to know um, who, who was, like, going to do something ridiculous. Like, oh, you know, I'm going to wake up today and just inject bleach into my veins because I read on some liberal forum that Donald Trump said it was a good thing to do. And then they're like, hmm, I'm going to go to Facebook and see how to inject... Uh, bleach into my veins and uh, they there's a there's a how-to on that from uh, Donald Trump himself and then before they play that on that video Facebook says warning COVID CDC says talk to your doctor and that person who was like just like right there with the va with like the, the syringe and the and the bleach was just about to get it and they thought oh I'm gonna click this uh, exclamation point on the oh Oh, you're not supposed to do that. Oh, that's not CDC approved. Oh, yeah, it, it's ridiculous. Here's Joe Rogan. Also, I think uh, if there's anything that I've done that I could do better is uh, have more experts with differing opinions right after I have the controversial ones. Uh, I would most certainly be open to doing that. And uh, I would like to talk to some people that have uh, differing opinions on those podcasts in the future. We'll see. Um, so, all right. So he has, to Joe Rogan's defense, he has had a lot of people on who've had taken the other side. They were pretty terrible guests, quite frankly. Dr. Sanjay Gupta came on the show, Joe Rogan experience back in October, and uh, was sort of, you know, wrong on a couple things. Rogan was wrong on a couple things. The conversation was weird. And then Sanjay Gupta went out there. Uh, this was the whole horse paste thing. Remember the horse paste conversation? Sanjay Gupta came out and uh, sort of doubled down on the horse pace thing until Joe Rogan rubbed his stinky nose in it. Here's, here's what Rogan says. You know, I do all the scheduling myself and uh, I don't always get it right. This, these podcasts are very strange because they're just conversations. And oftentimes I have no idea what I'm going to talk about until I sit down and talk to people. And that's why some of my ideas are not that prepared or fleshed out because I'm literally having them in real time. Um, but I do my best and they're just conversations. And I think that's also the appeal of the show. It's yes. one of the things that makes it interesting. It's interesting. Um, so, uh, I want to thank Spotify for being so supportive during this time. Right. On. Uh, and I'm very sorry that this is happening to them and that they're taking so much heat from it. 
Right on. So Spotify has been supportive, which is good news. And he's sort of sorry, guys, you know, you know, this is part of the deal. So that is good news. Not applicable says Fauci on Rogan. It's the only way. Demand it. That would be a great one. And I'd love to see that. Fauci would never do it because he doesn't like taking hard questions other than scolding at Rand Paul, I guess. And so this is the sort of the thing I'm talking about. Now, we're going to listen to Brian Stelter. This guy's going to say, listen, Joe Rogan is a dangerous misinformationist, and you should only be listening to CNN. We have full newsrooms of people who study these issues, and we're smarter than you and more competent. And so, you know, we get the facts as they are, whatever that means. I don't know what that means. You know, they get the facts because you can sort of talk your way through a lot of issues and sort of use logic and reason and come to your own conclusions on these things. But if it is outside of the same thing that CNN found, right, then it's, uh, I think it's illegal. Here's what Brian Stelter wants. The narrative is, I want to show all kinds of opinions. Which sounds great, but not all opinions are created equal. You think about major newsrooms like CNN that have health departments and deaths and operations that work hard on verified information on COVID-19. And then you have talk show stars Verified like Joe Rogan yeah. who just wing it, who make it up as they go along. And because figures like Rogan are trusted by people that don't trust real newsrooms, we have a tension, a problem that's much bigger than Spotify, much bigger than any single platform, Kate. But that's what the, is the heart of this right now. Yeah, but you're right. It is getting at something bigger that isn't going to be solved in one Joe Rogan video or one statement from Spotify. That's for sure. It's good to that's see right. you, Brian. Thank you Thank so you. much. Yeah, so the only way it's going to be solved, folks, is when... Everybody who's not CNN is canceled and thrown off the air. They'd be happy about that because then they wouldn't have to deal with these people who have way bigger audiences than them. That's just the worst. You know, Joe Rogan, he just wings it every day. And Brian Stelter, he has to get up and put a tie on that looks like that every day. And he's got to look at himself in the mirror every day and say, you look great. You got to go out there and get in front of a camera. Joe Rogan, he just gets done eating elk meat and then kicking a heavy bag and smoking some whatever and sitting down on this on the on the podcast and having a tremendous conversation that's more in-depth more revealing than anything brian stelter has ever done <laughs> and so he's angry about it it's rough anyways all right we've got one more media skirmish jen saki is having to clean up some of jen saki's own mess and so jen saki over the weekend was on uh, some sort of a show don't know what it was where she was commenting on the disparity throughout the media saying, you know, one of these things is just not like the others. One of these things just doesn't belong here. It's Fox News. They make my life miserable. Deucey's in my press briefing room every day, giving me a headache. That stupid SOB. And here is Jen Psaki now, who is going to be giving us a clip where she's sort of laughing at, I think scoffing at Americans who are kind of sick and tired of seeing their cities burn down in criminality. Here's Jen. If you look at Fox on a daily basis, I mean, do you remember the four boxes that you had that we had on all the TVs, right? Which Mm -hmm. is on my TV right now. So right now, just to give you a sense, so CNN, Pentagon, as many as 8,500 U.S. troops on heightened alert. Okay, true. Same on MSNBC. CNBC is doing their own thing about the market. And then on Fox is Janine Pirro talking about soft on crime consequences. I mean, what what does that even mean? Right. Um, So there's an alternate universe on some uh, coverage. What's scary about it is a lot of people watch that. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. You know what's scary? A lot of people do watch it. A lot of people way more than the other networks. And so I think that's what they're most scary about. And she talks about an alternate universe and you go, oh, my goodness. Yeah, you, you are right about that. There is an alternate universe. People are sort of tired of the criminality rising throughout their their streets. A lot of it violent, not good. Take a look at New York City, right? Even the mayor is saying, oh, I'm not a little bit comfortable driving on the subways out there. And so the pendulum swings the other way. I've said this was going to happen. You've said it was going to happen. We've been following this along since May of 2020, since George Floyd happened. And all the lunatics came out and said, we just don't need police anymore. We've had them for a long time, but we just don't need them anymore because they're bad for whatever reason. And we saw the big chorus of people screaming from the rooftops, defund the police, hashtag defund the police everywhere. And then suddenly the entire country decided, you know, Derek Chauvin looks like a good vessel for the last two, uh, two, three decades, uh, uh, centuries of racial strife in this country. We're just going to put it all on him. And we're just going to sort of uh, make him the scapegoat for a lot of this animosity. And then that's what they did. And then the 
cries for defund the police carried forward all throughout the years. And now we are facing the consequences of them and people are getting tired of them, which is why they're talking about it on Fox News, why people a lot of people are talking about it on Fox News and the other Democratic coverage channels that are copy and paste journalism across the board. They're all covering for the White House. That's why they're the same, Jen, because they're covering for your team. And the reason you don't want to watch the other guys is because they're not. And so Jen got asked about this. People are saying, you know, you kind of scoffed at something that is a legitimate issue. Even Democrats don't want their cities torched and their houses robbed. Surprise, surprise. Jen, were you speaking for the administration when you said, oh, they're living in an alternate universe, those people? Was that a formal policy from the Biden team? Here's what she said. I wanted to ask about, uh, there was an appearance, your appearance on Pod Save America. There was um, a discussion of Fox's crime coverage. Um, and one line has prompted some criticism um, from people. It was, um, stopped on crime consequences, what even is that? Um, were what you speaking in your personal opinion, or is that at all um, a reflection of the priorities of this administration? Because the criticism is that um, it would reflect that crime is not a priority of this administration. Well, I encourage anyone to listen to the full context of the interview and the conversation. What I was speaking to was a Chiron on Fox News, since you raised it, which suggested this administration is soft on crime with no basis. No basis. Okay, so uh, this administration, soft on, excuse me, with no basis. Well, that's, a, that's an interesting thing because... She might actually be right about that. You know, what have they done to sort of uh, defund the police other than talking about it all throughout the campaign, other than Kamala Harris supporting bailing out protesters who burnt down the third precinct police department in Minnesota? Hmm. Yeah. While she was actually a candidate. That's curious. I mean, they tried to pass a bunch of bills and things like that. Um, and also, they, they are sort of a part of this party. Now, this is not the administration. Let's see if we hear from the administration in this clip. I'm not sure if they're in there. Let's listen. So we've been talking about defunding the police. Uh, there's yep. some issues that we ask police to do, like mental health issues or policing in schools and all the rest, that perhaps we can uh, shuffle some of that money around. Suck it up. Defunding the police has to happen. We need to defund the police. Mayor Eric Garcetti <laughs> saying, take some of the money from hey. policing, about $150 hey, million. Dollars. I applaud Eric Garcetti for doing what he's done. Oh. Not only do we need to disinvest oh, there's from Ilhan. police, but we need to completely dismantle the Minneapolis Police Department. Whoa. So yes, defund your butts. Defund, defund you. your yes, butts. Yes, support the reallocation of resources uh, from NYPD. We will be moving funding from the NYPD oh my to gosh. youth initiatives. More and Democrats? Services. They are talking about reducing the allocation. Oh, that's of on Biden's team. That Housing and, and urban development. Every single city in this country ought to be thinking about the same thing. Yes, I support the defund movement. I'm for responsible Susan reallocation Rice. of resources and defund uh, the police i think you do all those other things you don't need all the money that's going to the police department oh. so yeah i mean the spirit of it I, I i do support that yeah and you know a lot of us were asked if we could imagine a future without police back in 2017 when we, when we were running for office and I answered yes to that question. We are going to reduce funding in the police department. How's that working and out there? redirect that money. There's no reason. The police How's that working in San Francisco? Growing, growing, growing. They can make sensible cuts to police. We propose to redirect over seven million dollars from the police. Bureau. How's that going in our Portland? city? Through our city administrative officer, identify two hundred and fifty million dollars in cuts. Rashida Tlaib tweeting. No more policing, incarceration, We're getting and militarization your questions next, folks. When this goes on for seven minutes, by the way. We're not going to sit here saying? for seven minutes. They're saying we want fundamental, basic change when it comes to policing. Uh, and seven minutes on this thing. Let me just show you. I think it's, yeah, look at this. Right. We are reallocating funds. The, the police department the here just keeps going. public safety. Fight to defund policing will continue. We are going to reimagine policing in New York City. I think the idea of having a police-free future is very aspirational. Reese keeps going. There's Reese. more Ted Wheeler, Imagine. Jamal Bowman. All right, so our commitment is to end our city's toxic relationship with the Minneapolis Police Department. To All right, how's that working out for him? Not too good, is it? All right, my friends, let's take a look at some questions over from our friends at Watching the Watchers dot locals.com and of course on youtube 
and see what we've got. We are doing a refresh on this one. While that loads up, let's check in. Over on YouTube, we have Not Applicable says, Whoopi used to say she was Jewish. Everyone forgot this. Did she used to actually say that? Yeah, yeah, is that, yeah. On uh, also another great comment from Molly Pop Inc. on Locals. I'm watching it right now. Rogan should not have apologized. All he has done is let the left know that he can be manipulated. They'll never stop. Yeah, so I've seen a lot of that. It's a great comment, Molly Pop. That one is, um, I think, very astute observation. I've seen headlines all over the place, right? Rogan apologized. Rogan apologized. Rogan apologized. And he didn't sort of do it that way, right? He, he didn't say I'm sorry to anybody for mistakes, and it's all being manipulated. So I think that there's probably a pretty good rule of thumb for, for those guys is just not to apologize for those things. Uh, but that was from... Molly Pop. We have another one from Not Applicable says, I kind of respect her from not bowing down. If she wants to be wrong, let her be wrong. Nobody should be run out of town just for being wrong, in my opinion. Yeah, from Not Applicable. I agree with that, right? I don't think that people should be canceled for being wrong. People make mistakes. People learn, right? I learn a lot in public right here on the show with you, right? Sometimes somebody sends me an email. Yesterday, somebody sent me a text message. You know who you are. <laughs> hey, uh, dummy. That was like not even close to right. It was, uh, I got Montreal wrong, I think, yesterday. Not even in the same city at all. But I don't, you know, I'm an American boy. So, you know, I, I agree with you, though. I don't think that people should just be run out. Everybody makes mistakes. We're all having conversations. The problem I have is that people like Whoopi and people on her side are the same people that scream for Joe Rogan to be canceled, right? To be thrown off the air. His opinions are too dangerous. There's misinformation all over the place. All of the view people, right, that are going to stand up and defend Whoopi are going to be the same people that are going to be screaming that Joe Rogan should be thrown off the air, right? So just access that hypocrisy for a minute. Okay, how about we just let everybody say their piece? Consequences can befall them as they may, but we give people the opportunity to speak, not silence them preemptively. Let's see, Miss Lucky's here, says the Aryan race was Hitler's thing. What about... That does Whoopi not understand. Maybe she should take an enlightenment tour to Auschwitz Memorial. Uh, so I actually visited uh, Dachau in Germany and uh, learned a lot about it there. Actually saw the inside of a lot of the buildings and it was, uh, it was a life-changing event. You could feel it, right? You could actually feel the energy on the land. It was a surreal experience. I'll never forget it. Former LEO says, I think that was Gobbles who might, might like Saki, who much like Saki is the chief propagandist. Three Girly says, Whoopi brings ignorance to a whole new level. The KKK also persecuted Jews. My ancestors left Germany to come to America. My great-grandfather was a full German Jew. Whoopi's comments are so repugnant, it goes beyond just naivete and ignorance. It goes to a full anti-Semitic thought process. She needs to go to the Holocaust Museum so that she can understand just how misinformed she truly is and how her ignorance completely showed. It is more than ignorance, but I can't find the word severe enough for her thought process. At some point, she should have just shut her mouth, maybe after the first time she opened it, and everyone gasped. That's from Three Girlies, and I noticed that, right? There was that big, silent pause. It's not about race. The whole stinking table was like, <gasps> what? <laughs> so I agree. Uh, we have Zulu, who says, Saki, GIF, or GTFO. There, I've said my piece. Uh, you know what? I was thinking about that, Saki. Saki gif. Uh, all right, Zulu. I'll do one. We got we to gotta get more members, though. I, need, I, I, get, I get... When we get three more members, I can add eight gifts. So I think I get one more. We'll add Saki. I was thinking about Saki, but... Uh, her, her gifts make her look good. I actually already looked these up. That's from Zulu. So, like, you know, you'd have to... You'd have to here, let's just take a look at this right now. Since we're on the topic, we're going to go to Giphy. Brace yourselves on the questions, folks. We're going to take a quick look at Saki gifts. Zulu's in the house. Let's see what we've got here. So, like, you know, I mean, they're like, all right. Like an oh, wow one. You know, like, they're just not as, she's not as like, um, as like a, you know, kind of like a character, like she's pretty standard, 
I don't know. Well, I'll, have to, I'll, I'll look around. It's a good thought. I'll have to look around on that one. That was from Zulu. Dave with a super chat. Thank you, Dave. Not applicable says, I hope she's sincere talking about Whoopi, but I really don't buy it. Also says, I don't buy the idea of race for the record. That's from not applicable. So, oh my God, this is awesome. Says uh, super chat says, honk. We've got Ivor Mecton from Lava Java Lava. Get me canceled on YouTube. Not applicable also says Fauci on Rogan. It's the only way demand it says whoever says speech is a problem is a tyrant from not applicable. A lot of them from not applicable. Thanks. Not applicable. Liquid city says the CNN dude said Joe Rogan is more trusted than real newsrooms. Well, they literally did that to themselves with spreading misinformation. I think that's exactly right, right there. The consequences that befall them are of their own making. Nobody just woke up and said, we don't trust you anymore. They've been ruining it for 20 years. Not applicable says, what's scary are her dead J, uh, KGB eyes? Nightmare H for G. And Reese, say, Reese says, hey, Rob, I just wanted to thank you for your work. Well, thank you, Reese. I appreciate that. I'm glad that you're here and enjoying the show and having a good time with us. We've got over on Locals, former LEO says, Rob, how can 16% of the population control the other 84% are supposed to think? I believe that I haven't seen equal treatment given to the majority. Almost all commercial commercials use, quote, minority actors. What happened to the equity of equal representation? As a white male, I'm tired of being treated as a second-class citizen. That's from former LEO. That's an interesting comment there, former LEO. I, and I, I have noticed that, right? The commercials are a lot more equitable these days. I think, I think, I don't know. Tree Mendes says, I noticed that Whoopi said we should discuss the Holocaust was about white on white inhumanity to man. Does that mean it's okay to discuss black on black violence? Because it's a real issue that gets ignored by the media. It's a good kind. I don't know. I don't know if you're allowed to talk about those things. I think you might be racist if you do. Thunder Seven says, Whoopi, not sorry. She's actually very intelligent, knew exactly what she was saying. She's always been nasty to white people. Now she's proven she's an anti-Semite too. I think her career is over. No amount of fake apology can cover her true dark soul. And look, we have <laughs> we have been talking about this for a long time now. Sort of the sort of the uh, I, you know I don't even know how to phrase this, but it's sort of it's being called the Victim Olympics, right? Sort of like who is the most oppressed group based on however you can slice and dice the matrix. It's like the oppression matrix. And it's getting complicated because we got a lot of alphabet letters that all are oppressed. We have, according to Whoopi, yeah, it's very simple for Whoopi. It's just black versus white, I think, is the only dimension in this analysis. Whereas, you know, LGBTQ, right, they ha have sort of their own. Now we're seeing like the transgender, right? It's getting complicated, all sorts of different pronouns. And then I think like, I think it's okay now to discriminate against Asians. Now I think, and, and other people, if you're selecting Supreme court judges, so you can't, you're allowed to discriminate in certain areas. It's very complicated folks. And it's like, I'm like tap dancing around every time we have this conversation. It's very precarious for me to be in, but it's an important one as we continue to sort of tease out exactly what's happening. But you know, whoopee, that only goes so far. You start to anger, uh, you know, a number of other groups. And if you only sort of think that you are the only uh, recipient of a, a problem that happens in society, like only your group has suffered and nobody else has. Well, that's not, it's not interesting to watch people who think that way. <laughs> because that's not true. Vientica says, bringing on someone from always defaming league doesn't spark confidence, but they are on the same team. Red Jersey says, wait, what's happening here? Seawolf says, even if you're a wise person on a popular TV show that many viewers watch reverently, you can still learn new things. It's a painful learning experience for Whoopi. Still a good one for the public to see. A person's race and skin color are not the same thing. Seems obvious, but there are probably many people who are just as stupid and hopefully we'll learn something as well. That's a very good way of looking at it, Seawolf, right? And I think that I think that's probably the most 
uh, you know, gracious way to think of the whole thing. And I like that. I think that it, it is a good lesson. And I think that we all are going to make mistakes, myself included. I know I've made many and I will continue to do it. But it's, it's I think, the, the, the issue here, I think, is that, and I can't think of an example of Whoopi specifically, but people think of that side of the aisle, right? Whoopi, what, wasn't she saying that Rogan should be canceled, right, because of his opinions on things? That he's dangerous and that anybody who doesn't comply with all the COVID policy should just be thrown out on their butts, right? So, like, if she's not going to show people that grace, people are asking why she should be shown that same grace, Former LEO says, how many lives have been ruined by the left over offhanded comments? This is the tail wagging the dog. Kenny 1B has some words for Whoopi. Nadarb says, always remember, if you think ABC has a moral standard, think back to when they got exposed for covering up that Epstein story by Project Veritas. These people have no souls. Uh, Vienticus Prime has a name suggestion for Whoopi. Whoopi Ku. Sheen. So like Whoopi Kusheen. I like that one. That's a good name. Yeah. And uh, probably not even trademarked. Vienticus says Spotify stocks have been doing what other stocks have been doing. Markins, a market's a little up, a little down, bouncing on the way up. Spotify about to release their earnings statement tomorrow. I think it might be a good one considering Joe Rogan's popularity in recent months. Well, I signed up for Spotify because of Joe Rogan. I like to support platforms that support people who are on there that are speaking truth. So I signed up for them. Hopefully that they, hopefully they see that, right? Hopefully other people did because it, uh, I think it matters. Thunder seven says Whoopi now self identifies as a Holocaust survivor. You can't criticize her because she suffered enough. She wants to be called Whoopi friend. Oh, that's no, we got Vienticus says, I saw these doctors speak at the rally in DC. What they said had a huge impact on the crowd. A lot of it was really just simple truths. Dr. Malone seems to have adopted a tagline. If there is risk, there must be choice. I like that. Vienticus also says, a lot of things that were stated as misinformation was stuff we've already known for years. I've actually had situations where I explained things and people would replicate experiments and get screamed at, made fun of, told I was killing myself because I wasn't the person on TV. Afterwards, I just brush off their reactions and say something like, just wait and see. Now that it's all been admitted by the talking heads, huh? Should I just put up my image about asking questions again? Yeah, a lot of it is being, you know, a lot of it's coming out. It's same, same thing that Rogan was saying. Miss Lucky says, how about a required course called critical thinking? It would be great if there was a, such a thing that people could just learn and deploy. But I think people would still, you know, I think people actively give it up, honestly. Like it's, it's a comfort thing. I don't like to make these difficult decisions. It's very hard. Oh, you can solve this for me. And when you give up your freedom, somebody else takes that and they use it for their purposes, not yours. Nadarb says, I think I thought of a winning argument for Section 230 in the text of 230. It says that a provider cannot be held liable if they in good faith remove something from their platform. Not only is there an obvious pattern of bias there, we saw in the Facebook case from Stossel, other fact checkers, Congress shall make no law, literally Congress... Congress made a law that says they can remove something. It violates your rights. I got to read this later, Nadar, because I'm not in uh, Section 230 mode right now. We've got Monster One says, but it's a, thank you for the comment. It's an interesting question. I'll respond after the show. Monster One says, apparently Whoopi used to do a bit with Ted Danson where he would wear blackface and say racial slurs. Hmm. Miss Lucky says, hey, Rob, your text and you and your text are fuzzy today. I thought it was the computer, but it was not. Is anybody else having uh, clarity problems? If you are, I apologize because the show's almost over. But it looks clear on my end, so hopefully it's okay on yours. Monster One says, so disappointed in Rogan, he basically pulled a Jack Murphy. Him allowing a content warning erases all credibility to any of his guests. Yeah, I don't think he had any real reason to negotiate at all, but, you know, he compromised and he's got responsibilities too. You know, it's a big, imagine the pressure on that, right? You say something, uh, you know, and somebody says, well, you just probably killed uh, 10,000 Americans. How about that? Right? Even if it's not true, you're like, oh gosh, <laughs> that's a lot of pressure, man. Why? Because I interviewed this guy, right? There are doctors saying that, right? There are doctors saying that out there. 
I've had people tell me that. And I'm not Joe Rogan, all right, or anything even remotely like close. So if it makes me think about it, what does it make Joe Rogan think about, right? If I think about what I say and how that might impact people's decisions, and Joe Rogan has an audience of a global proportion, right? And so one word that comes out of his mouth, he's got doctors saying, you're going to kill a million people if you, if you say that. So eh, pressure, a lot of pressure. Jack Elia just joined us. Miss Lucky says, the stelter black pink tie is very unmanly. <laughs> Tremendous says, Stelter says, all opinions are not created equal. I noticed that he didn't bother to play the clip where Rogan explains that his qualifications of his controversial guests. How convenient. Yeah, they're just going to take things out of context. C. Wolf says, every time I see Brian Stelter, I think of Costanza from Seinfeld, but with a much higher pitched voice. And Costanza at least was funny. Miss Lucky says the alternate universe must be the Biden ranch in Delaware. After all, it is home to the white, it is home. The White House is not. That's from Sergeant Bob. We had another couple from on page one. Let's see here. Just Cows is here, says, I got a town hall I'm attending tomorrow with Rand Paul at 530. What questions should I ask or what would you like to know? TOS says, thank Rand Paul for exposing Fauci. Ask him how uh, American citizens are pleased. Big fan of Rand. He's been the de facto fact checker. Ask him what he can do about Fauci. Yeah, so that would be my, that would be my question for all of these people. All of these Republicans in any position of power, the House or the Senate, when the Republicans take control again, which will happen at some point, might happen this time or the next point, I want to know what your first action item is to address the COVID pandemic response and to ensure that this never happens again, ever. And if there was any corruption that took place in this, which there certainly was, I think it should be rooted out. And I think that everybody who contributed to the panic, anybody who suckled off the teat of the government, anybody who tried to take advantage of this situation, either to gain money or power or to erode our constitutional rights, should pay the price for that. And I want to know what Rand Paul and these Republicans are going to do about it when they take power again. Concretely. Not that we're just going to do this investigation or we're just going to sit there and look into it. I want action and I want answers. And I want to know what Republicans are serious about getting to the bottom of it. And I'd like to hear that from any of them. Good question. Vianticus says, trust the experts. No one asks questions until it's too late. Then everyone asks the same question. Why? Good question on that. Uh, someone else says, are you on Facebook's S list from former LEO? Miss Lucky is here. Says, Rob, I listened to the show yesterday, sent in some comments, was sending them to the wrong place, wanted to try again. Talking about the truckers yesterday. I loved watching Viva yesterday. And so, hey, bye, we're going to read this here. Miss Lucky is formerly from Canada, now in Arizona. Shout out. I watched Viva yesterday, provided a great perspective of what was happening on the ground. It brought tears to my eyes listening to my anthem being sung by the people there and Viva's video showing how everyone was well behaved. It was a very peaceful demonstration and many families attended. Yes, Canada truckers and all supporters are standing up for their rights. It says, I think Trudeau is disgusting. He needs to be removed now. How dare he insult our Canadian truckers, calling them racist, etc. I really don't think that Trudeau got COVID. I talked to my sister who lives just outside of Ottawa, and she said his son has COVID, not him. How convenient that he has to be in quarantine with all this going on. Poor excuse. Does he not know about Zoom so he can talk to the truckers? He's just fake. He's a chicken, not my prime minister. He needs to get back to his real job as a real prime minister. No hiding behind the virus. Ugh. We're familiar with the trucker family. We have to listen for years to Sirius Radio Road Dog Truckers 146. We've learned a lot. So it is time. Go, truckers, go. That was from Miss Lucky. And so, yeah, so I'm glad that you got that comment in because I was wondering what you guys had to think about, had to say about the whole situation since you just moved from there. And so thank you for sharing that. I also thought it was a beautiful thing. And uh, I'm glad that there are people speaking out about what they're doing and supporting them. I hope it continues. Vientica says, I don't think a lot of people realize the nefarious nature of being an authority. It's one thing you're around people and build a rapport with them, but it can also be a reductive tool. Never trust anyone who doesn't have receipts from Vientica. 
Uh, was that on yesterday's? Uh, let's see. We've got another one. Okay, so Vianticus is defending Whoopi. Says, I, I will step in to defend Whoopi. I can see her point from the perspective as there being a deeper issue. I often say things like white power, black power, girl power are distractions in a way. People pay too much attention to these things. So if it's about power, if that's the adjective, then I get it. If that's what Whoopi meant, there's a surface level issue, then I agree with her. Of course, there's always a possibility this whole thing is about stirring up publicity. I think she stepped in it. Red Jersey says, I guess Whoopi never heard Pastor Neil Meyer's quote. First, they came for the socialist. I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionist, but I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. Great quote. Comes up regularly, as it should. Miss Lucky said the Aryan race was Hitler's thing. And so I think we read that comment. And so I think we're caught up on the locals' comments. Let's see over on YouTube. The Wandering Mariner became a member. Thank you for that, the Wandering Mariner. And so did K Bean. Shout out to K Bean. And I think, did we have another one today? So I, th oh yeah, Jenny B became a member. So we hit our three. So now we can add another GIF. And it's going to have to be Saki, I think. We're going to have to look for a good gift for her. If you have any good gifts, let me know in locals or anywhere else, uh, and we'll get that posted. I think I needed three, and then I can add another one. All right, and so we got a couple more questions from uh, several people. Uh, I'm Not Gas has a good one. Okay, a lot more comments came in. Yes, here we go. Miss Lucky says, the alternate universe must be the Biden ranch in Delaware. After all, it's home. The White House is not. Robute says, remember, guys, Joe Biden is a racist, called black people predators in his 1994 crime bill speech. I don't know if that's accurate or not. I don't know if I confirm that. I definitely know Hillary Clinton did, but I'm not sure that Joe did. Or, or I think Hillary might have called, uh, might have called the, the quote criminals super predators right or something like that i'm not sure about that anyway the point is remember joe biden supported storm strom thurmond that's right and who is a friend of robert bird who was a kkk member yep and there's pictures of them holding hands together he says he did not he says now he wants to support an african-american he can do that by giving pardons and he doesn't need congress says joe biden is all talk We've got another one from PWS MKAZ says, if freedom of speech is taken away, then dumb and silent we may be led like sheep to the slaughter. Great quote. Oh, that's from George Washington. That is a good one. Love that. Freedom of speech taken away. That is a good one. We've got another one. I'm not gas says, I think the issue here is people are confusing race and ethnicity. Whoopi is not wrong. She's just explaining herself horribly. The U.S. Census has only white, black, Hawaiian, Pacific Islander, Native American. Jewish is considered an ethnicity, according to our census. Also, the ADL is fighting so hard to make sure that people see a distinction between, quote, white and Jew is so that they can continue to run hit pieces about, quote, white supremacy without their own people getting hit. Oh, that's an interesting take, I'm not guess. Yeah, I mean, I think I see... I think I see your point. You know, it's sort of like a semantic thing, like she's, but, but then how do you tease out, like, how do you, how do you tease out her line? So then are black people ethnic or a race? Like, what's the limiting principle? Like where, how does, how do these concepts apply to her race or her ethnicity? I don't, I don't understand it. I don't know. It's very complicated, but she has it figured out in her head, I guess. Lee Fibbug says, Rob, so Rogan is going to bookend every episode featuring people with controversial views with a trigger warning on one side and an episode with some normie spouting the party line on the other. Sad. <laughs> I agree with that. If that's what happens, right? Like if he brings on like Dr. Robert Malone and then we hear from uh, like the CDC director, and that one woman from CNN who wants to vaccinate your kids uh, every month until they're dead. You know, like, is that what we're, and then like another one with Fauci and another one with, and then Joe Rogan's just going to be sitting there with Fauci. Like, oh, that's great. Tell me more about indefinite booster shots. Oh, that's curious. Oh, really? Well, I really hope that doesn't happen because 
you know, I don't want to see I don't I don't want to see these guys fall. Monster One says maybe if little Brian wanted to view people on CNN as if wanted people to view CNN as credible, maybe they could stop lying. But I know that might be a radical thought. Molly Pop says 13 minute clip, but people should take time to see the entire interview ASAP. This is from Molly Pop. Yeah, this is a great this is a great clip. I believe I've seen this. This is from now. Let me make sure this is safe for YouTube. Spoke? Yeah. Okay. So this looks good I've, I've watched this interview this is a fascinating interview uh kgb defector i would encourage you to take a look at this let's see what this says all right so that uh kgb defector yuri bezmanov and he's talking about basically the russian kgb playbook for uh you know basically indoctrinating uh americans and i think he says you know we're gonna start with the universities all, all you have to do all american mass media has to do is to unplug their bananas from their ears open up their eyes and they can see it there is no mystery. There is nothing to do with espionage. I know that espionage intelligence gathering looks more romantic. It sells more deodorants through the advertising, probably. That's why your Hollywood producers are so crazy about James Bond type uh, of, of thrillers. But in reality, the main emphasis of the KGB is not in the area of it intelligence at all. According to my uh, opinion and opinion of many defectors of my caliber, only about 15% of time, money, and manpower is spent on espionage as such. The other 85% is a slow process, which we call either ideological subversion or active measures, activne meropriatia in the language of, of the KGB. All right, so go listen to a lot more of that. It's a good one, really good one. And he basically says it's, it's just a slow process. You know, what you see in the movies, like Jason Bourne jumping off rooftops and, like, stealing the secret nuclear handbook guide whatever right? that's not reality uh, he says what well, it's going to be very easy what we're going to do is we're just going to send a bunch of these communist marxist professors to the colleges and they're going to indoctrinate all the college students and they're going to stick around for a while and then they're going to run things and then they're going to just turn everything over to us more or less and he's and the way he describes it like piece by piece it's like painting by numbers you know those coloring books and you just fill in the colors by the numbers it's basically that they're just executing the plan and it's the same thing that's happening with china and many others we have uh, a new book coming out uh, it's not my book it's a uh, uh, red-handed you see that book a lot of new stories coming out about this in particular the idea that something like 23 former elected congress people all lobbying now for chinese conglomerates and so they're just buying the country you don't have to wage a war with America. I just buy it because all of our traitorous former Congress people just say, oh, thirty five thousand dollars a month to, to do what to China? Oh, I just got to provide information about something that I don't think is relevant at all to you. Yeah. Happy to do that. I'll show you around here. I'll get you in to talk to that person. Hey, you don't you don't need military, right? You just buy it off with checks because our politicians are so weak and spineless, it's pathetic. All right. And so that was a good link from Molly Pop. P.W.S.M.K.A.Z says i think this is that's not whoopee anytime you feel bad think of this face that's not whoopee but could it's a bearing a uh, passing resemblance c wolf says the politicians calling to defund the police as well as their puppet master donors are not in the same class as the commoners they have their own security while our communities go to hell and we cannot protect ourselves or or they get federal right federal law enforcement right they'll defund your local law enforcement but they'll b bring in the feds They'll just replace it with your fed with feds, which, of course, are going to serve their interests, not yours. In the long run, the people become more desperate and dependent on the government and totalitarian creeps in. Who knows? That could be part of the agenda. Yep. And it's they'd be very happy with a national police force. Very happy with that. Robute says the mainstream media is Joseph Goebbels propaganda department led by Jen Psaki Goebbels. The mainstream media journalist should only be called propagandist for Goebbels instead of the journalist. That was from Robute. And I think, my friends, that is it. We had a couple on YouTube, not applicable, says her point was literally that you can't be racist against white people. I, yeah, that, that was the idea of the whole thing. The left wants to have it both ways. And Ronnie Cole became a member as well. And I'm grateful for that, which means we are going to be adding some gifts tonight. And I'm looking forward to it. I want to welcome some new people who joined up 
on locals. Give some shout outs here before we wrap it up for the day. We've got short time here signed up. We've got Richards the Real. Big welcomes to Lovely Gemini, Wonder Girl 30. We've got C Jones 007. John's here. One Tough Chick, Frank MC, Ion Energy, Wild Child's here, Alaskan for Trump, AZ Gray Man, Mr. Shields, Nora MC, LG00, Angry Bear, Sassy Steph, Ratbag 13, Ocean Lover, and Free Mind all signed up at our community at watchingthewatchers.locals.com. And I want to thank everybody for being a part of the show. We're going to do it all again tomorrow, and I hope that you join us for that. 4 p.m. Arizona time, 5 p.m. Mountain, 6 p.m. on the East Coast, and for that one Florida man, everybody else have a tremendous evening. Whoa, there's a super chat over on Rumble from Vientica. It says, the mainstream mouthpieces learned the hard way that the second victim, if not the first victim, of anyone's hubris is themselves final parting words from our friend vienticus final shout outs over there to anything we've got man versus yard buttercup for you and many others that my friends is it for us for the day have a tremendous evening sleep very well i'll see you right back here tomorrow bye-bye